Hey everybody, I hope you are all doing well. Uh, I'm filming this here on Saturday, uh, but by now, by the time you guys see this, uh, we have already had our first Zoom meeting on Sunday morning, uh, and I'm going to presume that it went very well. Uh, I would encourage you guys to join us uh, next week, Sunday morning, 9.30. Uh, we are getting together as a church, and we are going through uh, the book of Proverbs, a uh, book full of wisdom. But today, on uh, Saturday, so yesterday for you guys watching, uh, we were able to go on another walk in the park as it was beautiful weather outside again. I don't know if you guys were able to enjoy the weather at all or not. I saw John uh, on Friday and, and his video was able to enjoy the weather there as he filmed outside of his house. Um, and I would encourage you to watch John's videos as well if you haven't done so already. Uh, but we were able to uh, walk in the park again. And uh, this time, contrary to last week, uh, there was a thunderstorm uh, in the middle of our, war uh, of our walk. So I'll consider that a win. And so I hope you've all uh, been able to hang in there, to stick with it, and to keep your heads up uh, during uh, this pandemic of the coronavirus. So last week, uh, we started a new series. Uh, we're going through the gospel message, the good news. Gospel message is synonymous with good news. So we're talking about the good news that we have as Christians. And we're breaking it down into three sections. And those three sections are, one, the kingdom. That's what we talked about last week. Two, the cross. That's what we're talking about today. And then three, the resurrection, which we'll talk about next week. And so last week we talked about the kingdom, and the kingdom is our hope that we have as Christians. God is going to make everything wrong with this world right in the fulfillment of his kingdom when Jesus comes back to earth. And it's going to be a never-ending celebration. We're going to have eternal life. There'll be no more death. There'll be no more sorrow or crying or pain or sickness. None of that. Everything wrong will be made right. So it'll be a never-ending celebration. And this was at the the heart of both Jesus and those close to him. It was at the heart of their message that they preached. Uh, we That was kind of our focus last week as we talked about uh, the kingdom. Um, and we went through a number of verses, a number of scriptures to support this idea that the message of the kingdom was at the heart of both Jesus and those close to him, their message that they preached. Uh, but you can kind of summarize it uh, with Luke 4.43. In Luke 4.43, Jesus states, I must preach the good news of the kingdom of God to the other towns as well, for I was sent for this purpose. Jesus says, I must preach the good news of the kingdom. His purpose was to preach this message of the kingdom. And so if, if you haven't seen that already, I encourage you to uh, tune in and, and watch uh, the message from last week as we talked about the kingdom. But today uh, we are talking about the cross, the good news of the cross, uh, another core element of the good news of the gospel message that we have today as Christians. And so this may uh, come as a surprise uh, to some of you, but today, uh, well on Sunday, the day you guys are watching this, uh, is Palm Sunday. I know it, it does not feel like it uh, because uh, we're not really able to meet in person and celebrate as a church. I know it doesn't really totally feel uh, like Palm Sunday uh, for me. Well, that might be because it's Saturday for me, uh, but who knows. <laughs> uh, but next week is Resurrection Sunday or Easter Sunday. And, and so we're, we're in, in like the climax of the calendar year uh, for Christians. And unfortunately, uh, we aren't able uh, to meet in person due to uh, the coronavirus, but we can still celebrate together of the good news uh, that we have. And so today on Palm Sunday, we celebrate the day when Jesus triumphantly entered the town of Jerusalem for his last time before his crucifixion. Now, Jerusalem, it was the core location for the Jews. It was the capital city of Judah. Jerusalem for the Jews is like Washington, D.C. for Americans. I mean, it was it was the center hub of things that were taking place. And in Matthew chapter 21, if you don't have your Bibles, you can go ahead and pause this video real quick and go go grab your Bible. 
So now that you have uh, your Bible, in Matthew chapter 21, in verses 1 through 11, we can read about that triumphal entry when, when Jesus entered the city of Jerusalem for his last time before his crucifixion. And so starting in verse 1 uh, of chapter 21, it reads, Now when they drew near to Jerusalem and came to Bethpage to the Mount of Olives, then Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go into the village in front of you, and immediately you will find a donkey tied and a colt with her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, you shall say, The Lord needs them, and he will send them at once. This took place to fulfill what was spoken by the prophet, saying, Say to the daughter of Zion, Behold, your king is coming to you, humble and mounted on a donkey, on a colt the foal of a beast of burden. The disciples went and did as Jesus had directed them. They brought the donkey and the colt and put on them their cloaks, and he sat on them. Most of the crowd spread their cloaks on the road, and others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. And the crowds that went before him and that followed him were shouting, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And when he entered Jerusalem, the whole city was stirred up saying, Who is this? And the crowd said, This is the prophet Jesus from Nazareth of Galilee. So here, what we read just there, the, the triumphal entry, what we celebrate on Palm Sunday as Jesus entered the, 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 key, the key city, the capital city of Jerusalem. And so as they were getting ready to enter the city, uh, Jesus told a couple of disciples uh, to go find himself a donkey and a colt to ride uh, into uh, the city of Jerusalem. And so they did just that. They found the donkey just like in the colt, uh, just like uh, Jesus said would happen. And so Jesus rode into Jerusalem with the donkey and, and the colt. But this is totally contrary to what one would think. Now, Jesus is the king. He's the king of the world. And he's riding into this capital city of, of uh, Jerusalem, and he's riding on a donkey. You, you know, that goes totally contrary to what you would think. You would think Jesus would be riding in on a great, big, majestic horse. But Jesus rode in on a donkey and on a colt uh, to fulfill the prophecy in Zechariah chapter 9, uh, verse 9, uh, as they quote there in verse 5 of chapter 21. And so that was to fulfill the prophecy as Jesus, he, he was a humble king. He is a humble king. He's a humble servant. And so as Jesus entered the city, people were spreading palm branches before him and shouting, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he, Hosanna in the highest. Now, Hosanna, if you didn't know, Hosanna means to save. And so they were proclaiming to Jesus for him to save them. They wanted Jesus to save them. And as they were shouting, Hosanna, Hosanna, they were spreading palm branches before him uh, as Jesus was riding into uh, the capital city. And, and palm branches, they, they represented joy and victory. They represented victory to the people back then. And so as the people, they were laying down their, their palm branches, they were expressing that Jesus is going to bring victory to the Jews. And so the Jews, they wanted Jesus to save them, and they expressed that by yelling, Hosanna, Hosanna. And the Jews, they thought Jesus was going to bring victory, and they expressed that by laying down the palm branches. That's where we get the term Palm Sunday, as they laid down the palm branches, expressing that Jesus was going to bring them victory. And now it's human nature to have a narrow perspective and a narrow point of view, and that is exactly what the Jews uh, had here, a narrow perspective and narrow point of view. The Jews wanted Jesus to save them from the hands of the Roman Empire. They thought he was going to exhibit political victory over the Roman Empire. For the Roman uh, Empire, the Romans, they did not treat the Jews very well at all, nor the Christians uh, for that matter. And so the Jews, they were wanting Jesus to save them from the Roman government. They wanted Jesus to save them, and Jesus did come to save them. However, it was not at all what the Jews were anticipating. And so the crowds, as they were shouting, Hosanna, Hosanna, and they were signaling that victory was here with Jesus as they were sp spreading and, and laying down their palm branches, and they were blessing him. 
And, and so that's a marvelous picture that we have here as we celebrate uh, on Palm Sunday. But if we fast forward just a week in this narrative, or really not even a week, less than a week, and, and we're fast forwarding through a lot of events and a lot of biblical content as a lot of events are crammed into this last week of Jesus' life before his crucifixion. And so the crowds go, they, they go from shouting, Hosanna, Hosanna, on Palm Sunday. And then on Friday, on Good Friday, they're shouting, crucify him, crucify him. So they go from shouting, Hosanna, Hosanna, to crucify him, crucify him. What a crazy turn of events. Talk about a plot twist. And we can read about that in Matthew chapter 27, just, just six chapters later on in, in this book. In Matthew chapter 27 and verses 15 uh, through 23, Matthew writes, Now at the feast, the governor was accustomed to release for the crowd any one prisoner whom they wanted. And they had then a notorious prisoner called Barabbas. So when they had gathered, Pilate said to them, Whom do you want me to release for you, Barabbas or Jesus, who is called Christ? For he knew that it was out of envy that they had delivered him up. Besides, while he was sitting on the judgment seat, his wife sent word to him, Have nothing to do with that righteous man, for I have suffered much because of him today in a dream. Now the chief priests and the elders persuaded the crowd to ask for Barabbas and destroy Jesus. The governor again said to them, Which of the two do you want me to release for you? And they said, Barabbas. Pilate said to them, Then what shall I do with Jesus, who is called Christ? They all said, Let him be crucified. And he said, why, what evil has he done? And they shouted all the more, let him be crucified. And so again, just a week after the crowds are shouting, Hosanna, Hosanna, they're shouting, crucify him, crucify him. Man, what, what a, a stark turn of events here in, in just one week as the crowds are shouting, crucify him, crucify him. And so because of the Jews and Roman government, they do just that. They crucify Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. And I'm not really going to, we're not really going to delve too much into the actual crucifixion uh, as that's going to be our focus on Good Friday, on this Friday. And so I'd encourage you to tune in um, then uh, as we'll talk about the crucifixion itself. But, but again, because of the influence of the Jews, the Roman government, they did crucify Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, the Son of God, the Savior of the world, the same person they were shouting Hosanna, Hosanna to just a week prior. And so again, I mentioned that the Jews, they wanted Jesus to save them. And, and they wanted Jesus to save them from the rule of the Roman government. However, Jesus did not come at that time to save them from the Roman government. He came to save them from something so much more grave and so much more dangerous than the Roman government. Jesus came to save the people from their own sin. That's what Jesus came to save them from. For Romans 6, 23 states, The wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. So the wages of sin is death. What we deserve is death. We all have sin in our life. Romans 3, 23 uh, ma makes that very clear, makes that very obvious, that we all have sin in our life. And our punishment that we get, the wage that we deserve for our sin is death. We all deserve death, nothing more, nothing less. And so that's what we deserve for, for sinning. But Jesus came to save us from that punishment of death. Through the grace of God, we have access to eternal life. We have access to the entrance of God's coming kingdom, what we talked about last week. And so you, you, my friend, you, my family, you, my brothers and sisters, you deserve death. But Jesus came nearly 2,000 years ago to die on the cross for your sins so you would not have to experience eternal death, the eternal punishment of death. If you put your faith in him, if you put your faith in Jesus, then you will be saved and you will have eternal life in God's coming kingdom. Now, if that's not good news, if that's not the gospel message, then I don't know what is. 
This is the gospel message. This is the good news that we have as Christians. And this, my friends, this is reason to celebrate. Nowadays, uh, you go home and you turn on the TV and, and you take a look at the news and all you see is stuff about the coronavirus. And, and the media has deemed this news about the coronavirus breaking news. And they think that this is the news that you must see. This is the news that you must listen to. But you know what news people really need to be hearing? The news that people really need to be hearing is that they need to hear that nearly 2,000 years ago, a man named Jesus Christ died on the cross for their sins so that they could have eternal life in God's kingdom. That's the breaking news that our world needs to hear. That's the good news that we all have access to and need to share with our loved ones. A lot, a lot, a lot of people are down on life right now because of this coronavirus. But we have all the more reason to celebrate because of this good news that you and I have. The good news of the kingdom, the good news of the cross, and the good news of the resurrection. So I would, I would encourage you to pick up your heads and don't focus on the breaking news of the coronavirus. But rather, I would encourage you to focus in on the good news of the kingdom and the good news of the cross and the good news of the resurrection. Where that is the gospel message. That is the good news that you and I have that we need to be sharing with our friends and with our family. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. Thank you. I love you all. God bless. And again, focus on the good news of the kingdom and of the cross and of the resurrection. Have a good one.